Hello, Pastor Jim Doherty, Power to Change Crusades. So nice to be back with you. I want to thank all of you that have prayed for me and my family as we were sick over the last month. By God's grace, God healed us. But please continue to pray for my mother. She's still dealing with some heart circumstances, and we just trust the Lord. But thank you for your prayers for me and my family. Let's go to the Word of God in prayer. Let's pray right now. Heavenly Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you would speak to our hearts. We want to hear from you, grow in you, and be built and established and rooted in Christ. Would you speak to our hearts right now? We commit it to you, Lord, as we want to dive into the Word. May the Word of God dive into our hearts, and may the Holy Spirit speak to us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Turning to the book of James, James chapter 1. You know, what's interesting is James writes to the 12 tribes of Israel, the Jewish Christians, the 12 tribes that are scattered abroad. And you know, I think it's interesting is that the first chapter and the first several verses that he writes in his letter, he deals with trials. If you've been a Christian for a short time or even a long time, you know that Christian or not, we all go through trials because of the, the fallen world that we live in. But I want you to recognize that if you're a Christian, you're not alone. You have God on your side. We have God to lead us. We have his word. We have Jesus, our teacher. We have the Holy Spirit, our teacher, our tutor, that is. And then we also have believers around us that can pray for us. But we have an open book test, the word of God that helps us through the journey of life. And I just want to encourage you as you go through trial to depend on Jesus. He's the author and the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. James chapter 1, verse 2, James says, Dear brothers and sisters, when troubles of any, any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Another translation says, Consider it all joy when you fall into various trials. It doesn't say if, but here in this text, it says, When troubles of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity for great joy. Why? Because that trial is not going to last forever. We're going to be with the Lord one day without trials. And you know what? We can also rejoice that the Lord is with us. Hebrews 13, 5 says he will never leave us. He'll never forsake us, no matter what you go through. I want to thank all of you that watch me on TikTok. By God's grace, I minister to thousands of you daily. If you don't uh, follow my TikTok, please check it out. It's at Pastor Jim Doherty on TikTok. I get to pray for many of you. And it's been an honor and a blessing to pray for you as we all go through trials and we all go through situations, but God is able to take care of us. And if you need prayer, please write me or call me. I'd love to lift you up in prayer. But continuing here, we need to consider it all joy. That's what James says here. And then he, verse 3, he says, for you know when your faith is tested, see, God tests us, but the enemy brings temptation to pull us down. But God is testing us so that we can grow. And that's what it says here. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. You see, God wants you to grow deeper in Him, grow in dependence on Him, grow in faith, grow in the Word of God and grow in prayer. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, trials come in many different sizes. A trial for you might not be a trial for me, but you know what? Trials of many kinds that we go through really get our attention. And you know, we need God in every size of trial. We need God's wisdom and direction and we need to become people of prayer. and But we need to also pray that God would help us to become people of his word, that we can study it and apply it to our life. When we're going through things, look at the Psalms. I love how David, when he went through things and he wrote about it, there's so much in the word of God that, that we can grab. I mean, the whole 66 books, absolutely. But I just love how when David went through things, in the Psalms, he wrote it you know, down and, 
And it just ministers to my heart every time I read the Psalms. But throughout Scripture, there's encouraging Scriptures, promises of God's Word that we can take hold of and that we can apply to our life. The Word of God is powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. Amen? And so let's be people of the Word. But as we go through trials, let's go to the Word of God. Let's go in prayer. Let's ask God to show us what we're going through and why. Because God has a purpose for it. And so it's growing us, and it's growing your endurance, and it says your endurance has a chance to grow. So verse 4 says, so let it grow, for when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. And so when you're in the midst of a trial, look up. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for discernment. Ask God for direction. And get good counsel, by the way. There's a lot of opinions out there. Let's make sure that those that we get counsel from are from God's Word. Because we want sound and biblical counsel as we're going through things in our life. But at the same time, let's pray for one another. Let's love one another as the Bible says to do. And so James says, says, let it grow. For when your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. Let me just say that your patience grows. When you're going through trial, your endurance grows, absolutely. But I pray that our faith is growing as we go through the midst of trials. Now, when you look at verse 5, I want you to recognize that the very first place we should go when we're going through a trial is to God. We need to go to Him, number one, and ask Him in prayer for wisdom. Does that mean that we don't go to brothers and sisters in Christ and ask for uh, godly counsel and biblical wisdom? No, we, we can, we should, but let's go to God first in his word. Look what James 1, 5 says, If any need wisdom, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking. Another translation says, If anyone lacks wisdom, let them ask of God who gives liberally without holding it back. God will give you wisdom. God will give me wisdom as we go through trials. But I'm so grateful that we're never alone. And you know what? The wisdom that God gives us is not only to teach us, but it's also to teach someone else. I, I have gone through different trials and many trials over the years. And in the midst of it, I was wondering, God, what are you showing me and what are you doing here? But you know what? Later in life, as I look back, as I've been a pastor now for 28 years, I can say, you know what, God? Thank you for allowing me to go through that because I was able to minister to someone else. I remember my dad when he went to be with the Lord in 2016, and it was a tough time. He was on life support in the very same hospital that my daughter, a year and a half or so prior, was in the same hospital on life support herself. My daughter's here today. My dad is in heaven today. But, you know, going through that trial and and circumstance, God taught me so much in both of those, in my daughter's situation as she was on life support at at birth, but then on, on my dad's situation as he was almost 72 years old, had a massive heart attack in the car, and came back on the third shock. They put him in life support in the ICU, and he was on a ventilator for many, many weeks. He came off the ventilator. He actually breathed on his own. But he was in difficult circumstances, and it was a difficult time for me and the family as we prayed and asked God for wisdom and direction and discernment. But shortly after my dad went to be with the Lord um, at the church that I was pastoring at that time on a Wednesday night, I had a, a dear woman of God come in uh, for the first time to that church, and I still remember this day. She stayed at the back, and as I closed in prayer, she says, "Um, are you the pastor here? And I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And she says, my dad just died this week. Is there anybody that can minister to me as I'm really needing prayer right now and just needing God to minister to me? And, And so me and my wife, for the next several minutes and even hour, We sat down with her and just prayed for her and loved her and supported her. And I was able to share that my dad just went to be with the Lord that very um, week that her dad did. 
in 2016, we go through things in our life to grow us, to grow us spiritually, to grow us in faith, but to grow us in maturity and to grow us in dependency on Christ and his word. But we go through things so that we can go. We grow, of course, but to go and minister to someone else. Look at the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4, Paul says, all praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles so that we can comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort that God has given us. We go through things in tr trials in life, not only to allow us to grow in Christ and grow in our faith, but we go through things to grow us to minister to others. Are you going through a trial right now? I want to encourage you to go ask God for wisdom, James 1, 5, and he will give it to you. I want to encourage you to pray and ask God to grow you through the trial. See, a lot of times people say, God, take me from the trial. But in reality, he takes us through the trial. Remember this as you go through the circumstances of your life. Again, it's not if, it's when. We go into various trials. Read James as he says that right off the bat in his letter to the church, to the uh, 12 tribes of Israel, the Jewish Christians. Let us learn from his letter, but let us learn that why we go through things is God is growing us to be able to go and minister to someone else, but also to mature us in the faith. Keeping those things in mind. If you're watching right now and you're not saved, I want to invite you to put your faith in Jesus Christ. As the Bible says, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. We've broken the law of God. James 2.10 says, if you've offended in one point of the law of God, you've offended all of it. The Bible says we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Bible says that we need to repent. We need to get right with God. Acts 3.19, turn from your sins and turn to Christ, that times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. If you would like to be forgiven of your sins by Jesus Christ and get right with God and have the Holy Spirit take residence in your heart, making you a child of God and making you born again, I want to encourage you to turn from your sins, to repent, and recognize we've all sinned before God. We've broken the law and we need God's forgiveness. And Jesus can forgive you of all your sins right now. As the Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised his son, Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. Today is a day of salvation. And I want to encourage you. God can save you from hell. God can forgive you of your sins through his son, Jesus, and you can be forgiven. And let me just say, if you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you will never be alone in this life or for eternity. Would you pray with me? Make this your prayer. Put your faith in Jesus as Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, I believe that you sent your son, Jesus, who is God in human flesh, who died on that cross at Calvary for me. He took the wrath of God. He took my sin on the cross. And I ask him to forgive me now and make me a child of God. Fill me now with the Holy Spirit as I put my faith in Jesus alone to save me. I repent of my sins and turn from them now and believe that Jesus, that you can save me and forgive me by the blood that you shed on that cross. Make me right with God. I ask you to be my Savior and Lord. And write my name in the book of life in heaven. And I ask you to forgive me and make me a, a new believer. Make me a Christian. Make me a follower of Jesus Christ as I put my faith in Jesus to save me now. Save me from hell. Save me from the penalty of my sins being separated from God for eternity in hell. And wash away all my sins as I repent right now and I turn from them and I put my faith in Jesus. And I thank you for dying for me and being crucified, buried, and rising again from the dead. 
I put my faith in Jesus to save me now and make me a child of God as I believe and trust in Christ Jesus as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If that's you, would you please call me at 1-800-973-5543. If you do call, leave me a voice message with your name and phone number. Look forward to connecting with you. If you're watching on social media, would you please write me a post? Write me a message. Let me know if you gave your life to Jesus Christ. If you recommit your life to the Lord, I'd love to hear from you as well. As a prodigal son, a prodigal daughter, God can forgive you and set you free of your sins through his son, Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for the opportunity of sharing God's word with you today. Let's focus on Jesus let me remind you, his eyes are focused on you. If you know him, if you're his child, thank you, Jesus, that you never leave us. Listen, if you, friends, if you'd like to stand with Power to Change Crusades, we're a 501c3 nonprofit ministry. And I would encourage you, look at the address on the screen. Power to Change Crusades, Post Office Box 33901, Granada Hills, California, zip code 91344. Your gifts and your financial support and your prayers are helping Power to Change Crusades with Pastor Jim Doherty take the gospel literally around the world. Just yesterday, I checked our TikTok, and by God's grace, 56,000 people watched our videos, my prayer videos, and sharing the gospel as I do so every day. And just this week alone, 154,000 people have watched our videos. Actually, this month has been much, much more, and I give God the glory for that. If you would like to stand with us, please write a check to Power to Change Crusades, Post Office Box 33901, Granada Hills, California, zip code 91344. If you'd like to give online, go to our website, power2change.org, and click the PayPal button, and you can give through credit card there. You don't have to use your PayPal. You can use a credit card and give to our ministry. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for the blessing of being with you tonight, today, wherever you're watching around the world. And I pray that God would be with you, strengthen you, protect you, and heal you.